Special thank you to my YouTube members and patrons for supporting the channel and supporting my content. How's it going everybody and welcome back to a, no, not a subreddit video. I almost, almost fell into the habit there. Slightly different thing today. I've done one of these before. I did it for the Oculus Quest 2. We're going to be doing an unboxing and like first look video. So today I have got a Steam Deck. It has finally arrived. I put in a reservation in April, May-ish and it's finally arrived. So today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of that and we'll be doing a first look. I will possibly do some gameplay and like a just kind of a brief like this is how it, it plays and it runs okay and stuff but I don't know how I'm gonna record it yet so I'll figure that out later. Briefly before we open just a couple of things to do with my Steam Deck. I bought the middle ground one which in the UK was £459. The reason I chose that one is because it has a 256 gigabyte SSD storage instead of the 64 gigabyte I think that the other one has. I just felt like that extra storage was gonna be super useful and I didn't want to spend all of the money on getting the really expensive really big storage one but it's got an uh, NVMe SSD so nice and quick storage so that's good. Uh, very brief specs I'm not gonna go into the speed of the processor and GPU and all of that stuff because no one really knows well some people know what that means techie people know what that means but like people that are looking to buy Steam Decks and are watching a video like this aren't really gonna be looking for the clock speed and the core size they're gonna be looking for the resolution and the screen size which is 1280 by 800 pixels resolution screen and a seven inch display size which I was going to compare it to the switch and I never actually looked up what the switch resolution was give me just a second so the switch resolution is 1280 by 720 so they are the the same width however the steam deck has a extra 60 pixels in height so really not a huge amount in it however obviously you can download steam games and pc games and play your Steam library on it, whereas on a Switch you are completely limited to the Switch library. So that's the big thing there. Um, and also all of them come with a carrying case. The middle one, I don't know, I think it comes with the same carrying case as the cheapest one and if you get the most expensive one you get like a premium carry case and this one also comes with a Steam community bundle, which the first, the, the cheapest one doesn't. So that's like the brief specs that I'm going to go through out of the way. Onto the unboxing, I guess. First thing I noticed was it comes in just, I ignore the labels. I've ripped off all my labels. I don't want you guys getting my address. <laughs> comes in just a really generic box, which I think is fine, right? I thought that this might have just been the shipping box. So I opened it and there was no box inside. This is the box, which reduces card board I guess so that's a good thing and also it's probably less likely to be stolen during delivery because it's not in a hey look this is a steam deck box so that's probably a good thing so I've not really got any issues with that you know you can't put the box on display really it's not gonna look pretty if that's something you care about but it's a box at the end of the day one thing I do like very much like about the box however is on all of the warnings labels one of them is a if if my camera focuses it's a companion cube <laughs> so uh uh, you know, valve. Valve be valve. So let's take a look, shall we? Opening it up. I've already cut it open, so I don't have to do that. I'll give you all nice shots of everything as well, like, because you can't see me actually opening it, but I'll show them up to the camera and I'll also get some nice, like, B-roll, I guess, of diff different shots anyway. I've got whatever this is. This is kind of like vague instructions and warnings. So in the box, we have another box, which I'm guessing is going to be the power cable. What does it say on it? Power adapter. Yes, so we've got the power adapter, which is taped closed. To be honest, I don't know. I shouldn't have expected anything else to be in there. It's just a power adapter. It, it is exactly what it says it was on the box. And then the last thing in the box is the Steam Deck and carry case. They come together. First thing I'm noticing, this carry case is considerably larger than I thought it would be. Considerably larger. Your games are going places in... Oh, it comes up rainbow on that camera. That's nice. It is actually rainbow. That will be why. Oh, it's got a nice little handle. That's nice. I don't have a regular switch. I have a switch light. So that's what I'm going to be comparing 
comparing the case to because I actually have the box right here. This is a size comparison <laughs> to my Switch Lite carry case and the Steam Deck case. That is big. So yeah, that's big. I've also got my Switch Lite here, so we'll compare the size to that as well. I did compare the screen resolution to the regular Switch, not the Switch Lite. I don't, I think they have the same resolution. Yeah, the Switch Lite has the exact same resolution, only it's a 5.5 inch screen, not a seven inch screen of the Steam Deck. So the Steam Deck should be a little bit bigger, just a little bit. And I think that's reflected in the size of this monster case. Nice little carry strap though. Like I do like the strap and it's got a big like elastic strap here. So you can attach it to something, I guess. Or I don't know, you can secure it in your bag somehow. It feels like a really sturdy case, which you want for transporting something as expensive as a games console. So that's nice. Oh good, it's got a... <laughs> It's got a tag on the zip so I can't open it. I didn't plan this far ahead. Maybe scissors, but I might be able to knife it. That's what I'm gonna try, but it's a proper plastic tag. Oh, wow. Okay, it's... It <laughs> The case actually is compact. Oh, it's got two little finger paddles there that you can, I believe you can bind them to different keys. So you've got little clicky paddles and then obviously you've got the trigger and the bumpers. Feels nice. It feels nice. Right, so I guess we run through everything that this has got going for it currently. So classic triggers and bumpers, you're gonna get that on anything. The Switch, on games, controllers, anything. It's got two little paddles on the back, which is really nice. And they're nice and clicky. You can use those for anything really. You can bind them to any key. So if you're playing something like Dota, I guess you can have it bound to keys. Probably not the, you want a keyboard for something like Dota really, but you know, FPSs, you can bind it to melee and grenade and whatever. The analog sticks, feel nice. They're nice and smooth. They feel really good. The triggers feel nice. The bumpers feel nice. The buttons are a little bit nicer than my Switch Lite. I don't know if that's just because the Switch Lite is old because I've had it for over a year, over two years. How long have I had it? Nearly three years. So the, the buttons might be slightly worn from that anyway. What's the deep pad? Oof almost dropped it. D-pad feels nice. And then unique to Steam stuff. You do have these on the Steam controller, I think, but nobody bought the Steam controller. And also it replaced analog sticks on that, which is a weird choice. You have these. So these are touch pads that you can control like a trackpad on a laptop, but you've got two of them and they also click in. However, also the screen is a touch screen, very much like a switch. Volume, on off, USB-C, aux cord. I believe that is for putting in a memory card down here because you can put in SSDs like you could with a Switch for extra storage. Proper size comparison real quick to actually show you. The Switch Lite almost fits in just the screen. <laughs> It's a big size difference. Yeah, the buttons are really high. This is the only thing. I do have abnormally large hands and it feels actually really good for me. I, I really like the positions. They are like the perfect length of my thumbs. However, someone like Leo. I have very small hands. I guess you have to hold it up really high. Yeah, that's... That's, yeah, I have to hold it up really high, but it's quite awkward. I suppose it would just take some getting used to, but it's very different. Because it, it's a lot taller than Switches. Obviously for me with a Switch, I'm holding that. Like I actually have a, a, the Switch resting on my finger because it's so small for me. Whereas that I can properly like grasp it. Yeah, I have to hold it incredibly like high up, but I'm sure like it would it take some getting used to. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I think the brief look, it feels nice. Like it feels like a quality product. The clickies are nice. So I guess now stage two of this, I will jump cut to when I've sorted this all out. I'm going to boot it up, download a couple of games, give it some test goes and give my first opinions. I'm going to test a few games. I'm going to test Halo Master Chief Collection, which I know for a fact doesn't technically work and you have to download something to get it to work. But if I can get it to work, then that's testament that I can. And if I can, most people can. So yeah, I will be right back when I've got some games on and we'll have a brief look at some games. Right, we are back. Obviously next day I'm wearing different clothes. I ran out of time to finish testing and record yesterday so I've had to uh, do this the next day but that's fine. Very quickly uh, I forgot to mention well I didn't really forget to mention this was something I more learned after the video. The Switch OLED actually has a seven inch screen which is the same size as the Steam Deck so they have the same size screen but it is still wider because
use the controllers themselves the actual grips and everything are bigger and chunkier so it is still a bit bigger than the switch oled one thing i noticed with testing the steam deck a really key flaw something that should be really simple and shouldn't be an issue but is a genuine issue is the fact that you can't download games while the steam deck is in sleep mode and that's not just turned off that's asleep you know in the way that you just press a button and it immediately wakes up like you could do with a switch or with most consoles at this point the steam deck does not allow you to download games while it is asleep you have to have the screen on to me that's a huge issue because games like the witcher are like 60 gigabytes in size so that's going to be five hours probably on my internet maybe even longer download time i have to leave the screen on the whole time i have to disable it going to sleep i have to put it on charge and i have to leave it on the whole time to download games that should be a really easy fix you know that should be something that they can really easily just add allows download while in sleep because it's not turned off it's asleep so that's a huge issue for me personally you can work around it you know just put it on charge but like shouldn't really have to so in testing i tested four games i tested two uh kind of indie games that are pixel art style because they're kind of perfect for it and they looked really nice i tested uh ftl which i think most people will have heard of i tested vampire survivors which is a fairly recent roguelike really fun game i tested monster hunter rise and i tested halo master chief collection which i did get working really easy you just have to download it find a file and delete one file and it will work i can't play it online because of this because the issue is easy anti-cheat but i can play it so i'm happy vampire survivors was a pretty solid 60 frames per second at all times there were occasionally very brief minor frame drops but as anyone that's played it will know that game gets super hectic there's a million things on screen at once and even on my high-end pc it occasionally has frame drops so i'm more inclined to believe that's a limitation of the engine of the game than it is the hardware of the steam deck not running it properly so no complaints there looks good plays good perfect next up was f TL. This one was iffy. It, it ran perfectly fine. Like, performance wise again 60 fps however controlling it is quite weird it has basically set all of the key bindings to keyboard commands and you know fdl is full of shortcuts or you can click the buttons to do things so it's quite weird to control this is pause you know this is click you have to use the right analog stick or the touchpad to control the mouse or you can touch the screen but it's a bit of a weird control scheme i think it's just gonna take learning more than anything else because at the end of the day you are moving from keyboard and mouse to effectively a controller on a game that doesn't officially support controllers so it makes sense that it's a bit weird but that's something to note and you might have that same issue with a few things like FTL but other than that it ran perfectly fine and once I've learned the controls I should have no issues. Next I moved on to Monster Hunter Rise and again that game ran really smooth. I do have the graphics set to average rather than um, high because I even if it can run it at high i just want the consistency in a game like monster hunter in high it might occasionally drop and while occasionally dropping isn't really an issue if you're in the middle of a fight you want all the frames you can get you want it to be consistent right and also the more it struggles the faster the battery is going to run out so i just really wanted to try and you know get a better amount of battery and the most consistent frames i can get but other than that it ran perfectly fine it it looks fine like it i think it probably looks exactly the same as it does on the switch it might even look slightly better i'm not sure but it looked it looked good it looked fine it ran fine plays fine monster hunter rise gets a thumbs up and then there was halo master chief collection and this one i was to say concerned about i don't know because this one isn't officially supported right in fact all of the support stuff says it's not supported you cannot play this but you do go in and delete a specific easy anti-cheat file super easy and then you can run it fine i actually found that you can run Halo Master Chief Collection in enhanced graphics. I did only test Halo Reach and I was in Firefight because I thought Firefight would be chaotic enough for a good test. You can actually set the graphics to enhanced rather than faithful. I, I think it's called faithful. Basically you have what the graphics would have looked like on an Xbox and enhanced graphics. And the Steam Deck smooth 60 on enhanced graphics on Halo Reach. I was super impressed by that. Again, it plays the same. It just feels like you're using a controller. It feels like you're playing on xbox only you have a screen
screen attached to the controller, which I can take Halo on the move now. That makes me really happy. So ultimately in testing, the Steam Deck really solid. It works really, really well. The only issue, as I already mentioned, is that downloading games you cannot do unless the Steam Deck is on, screen on. That's the one thing that needs changing, in my opinion, that's the key thing that needs changing. Other than that, I think you get about three hours battery life, though that really depends on the game. Some games I think are going to drain it faster, some slower. Probably recommended to get a power bank if you think you're going to be out for longer than that and want longer playtime, especially if you're on a plane flight or something. Having a power bank to raise that, it has about a 5000 mAh battery, so if you got a 10,000 uh, charger, you've got two charges out of that, you know, a 20,000 one, you've got four extra charges out of that. So, you know, that's, you spend like 30 quid on a charger and you can times your play time by five. So that's pretty good. Yeah, no. So that, I think that's where I'm going to end it. We've had a look at the Steam Deck and that's my, my opinion on it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. <laughs> Sorry, I don't really know how to end the video. I don't do videos like this very often. Um, special thank you to all my supporters who support me over at Patreon and, um, all of my YouTube members who support me, uh, all of your names are on the screen. And to anybody that wants to support me and wants to join either YouTube members, which you can click on the channel to join, or Patreon, the link is in the description to join, feel free to do so, but by no means should you feel like you have to. I'm going to keep making content regardless. Uh, go check out my Twitch because I'm streaming every Thursday um, at 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Currently playing Elden Ring, so go check that out. We're playing through that, that's been fun. Um, the link to that is in the description and also there'll be a pinned comment about it so definitely go check that out other than that thank you so much for watching everybody and i'll see you in the next video peace out